Hey, today's forehand lesson is for those 3.5 tennis players looking to win more matches at 3.5 and then also get up to the next level. And so I really want you to watch this video carefully and then think about what type of forehand do you have. You see, at recreational tennis, there's two basic type of forehands that I see all the time. You have a push forehand and then you have a swing forehand. I'll explain what that is in a second. But the major problem that most people have who love to watch YouTube videos is everybody is trying to emulate the best players in the world all the time and they're trying to, whether they play singles or doubles, they're looking up you know, how to hit that forehand like Roger Federer and that's great. But but some of you guys are looking up that video and you have a push forehand. So let's get into this video so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's talk about the push forehand versus swing forehand. Now most of you watch this video are going to assume that the swing forehand is a more superior way of hitting shots and that you win more matches if you can swing which is basically a swing forehand, is a more professional style stroke to where you're swinging your racket through the ball, okay? And you're going to assume, especially you're going to think that I'm going to think that if you have a push forehand, that that is an inferior way to hit the ball. And that's actually you know what I'm going to teach you in this video. Explain why you need to do both if you especially want to win tennis matches. Okay, so a swing forehand, just to be clear, it's where you are more rotational here in your hips and you're letting the arms go and you're swinging like you're creating that momentum from your hip and then you're literally swinging or throwing your racket forward at the ball and it it goes forward and around, especially if you're looking to hit the ball more modern, more like your favorite players on TV, whether you're watching Alcarez play or Nadal or favorite Roger Federer. This is how you want to, this is how you want to hit the ball. And this is what most people out there are trying to do. And in order to do that, you really need to let the racket go. And to do it at a high level, you need to add topspin. You kind of need to have topspin. You can do it swinging flat, but it gets really, really hard to do. You certainly can't swing at it having slice. So to have a swing forehand, ideally you want to be in a strong eastern or semi-western grip. And we do want those strings facing towards the ground. That's what you're going to see the pros do. We're going to see that when they get their rack, especially when it gets back here, their strings are facing towards the ground. And then when they come on up, they're hitting and then rolling through the ball. That's going to enable you to be pretty consistent having a swing forehand. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of recreational players, you're, you, you're trying to do that, but you don't have all the technique baked in yet. And when you get a little bit nervous, you do something called a tweak, okay? You do something called a tweak to where you're trying to do everything step by step, and then right as you get to contact, you're trying to make the shot, you're trying to take care of that ball, and that ball's not gonna care about you when you try and do that. It's gonna let you down, it's gonna betray you, and the ball's gonna fly, because you're gonna tweak, and then you're gonna have this nice follow through, and you're not gonna see much rotation in the ball. You're gonna be like, why do I keep missing that shot? Because you're tweaking your forehand. So. It, it, it requires a lot of reps, a lot of timing. It requires that top spin and really good technique and timing to do that under pressure when you're playing your matches. And this is why a lot of 3.5 players will lose to players with a push forehand because you haven't mastered this shot yet and you haven't mastered the time and you have all these different swing thoughts in your head and you're playing somebody who has a lot less to think about when they're hitting their shot, which is the push forehand. So let me explain what that is. So the push forehand is what it sounds like. You're, you're basically using a lot of your body to punch or push the ball forward. A lot of the energy is gonna come from the shoulder, from your hitting shoulder, pushing. Pushing. Think about pushing something forward, right? Taking uh, a big dresser and having to push it against the wall. That is the technique that you're going to be doing on your forehand when you're when you're pushing your forehand. It works pretty well in a weak eastern or even a continental grip. And especially the more you keep it like a volley technique, you're going to be able to become a pretty good pusher with your forehand. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to be a pusher with my forehand. But you absolutely do want to become a pusher with your forehand as well as a hitter. If you can do both, then you have more variety and you can also execute better when you're nervous.
See, for most recreational players, even though they don't want to admit, admit it, their, their stroke starts to betray them. If you're somebody who has a swing forehand, that's going to betray you a lot easier in matches when you start to lose a lot of confidence because yes, even though it might look better than your opponent, it's harder to execute and you haven't mastered that. And if you have any nervous feeling and you still have to swing at the ball, right? That's a lot harder to hit in under pressure to where if the racket isn't moving that much and you're playing a match and you're just basically having to bump the ball, the ball comes to you, you basically bump it back. That's going to be a lot easier to execute under pressure. And this is why I want you to actually develop both because I have a saying. I say, hitters win. So if you're able to be a Roger Federer, a Serena Williams, yeah, you can go out there and you can just throw knockout punches all day and you can win matches being a hitter. At the recreational level, pushers win too. I did a survey, 65%, their least favorite person to play is a pusher, so they win a lot of matches. See, so whether you want to admit it or not, 65% of you have admitted, I hate playing pushers the most out of any style, and we know that they win. The, the best, maybe the greatest pusher of all time at the recreational level is MEP, most exhausting player, right? And, and so he's pushing a lot of his forehands. And what happens, especially because it's on camera, a lot of his opponents get nervous, they're hitting, but they haven't mastered their hit, and under pressure he's able to just basically push and punch the ball around and he's going to win. So we have hitters win, pushers win, tweeners lose. And so that's why I wanted to talk about the swing versus the push forehand and for you to recognize what you do. Are you a swinger? Are you a pusher? And there's nothing wrong with your, if you're a swinger that's great. If, if you push, that's great too. I just want you to really identify and go, yeah, I kind of push and punch most of my forehands. Yeah, I try and swing at most of my forehands and realize, well, what's holding you back, especially if you're a swinger, what's holding you back from being more consistent and winning these 3.5 matches is probably because you become a tweener you become a tweener because that's who loses. You become a tweener in your matches, right? So you're trying to swing. You're not trying to push, but you're trying to swing, but you're in between. And then that's when the ball starts to do crappy stuff like that. It starts to fly on you. It like dumps into the net, right? Because you're tweening your shot. You're not quite swinging. You're, you're not quite pushing, you're tweening. And so if you want to win the most amount of matches, I want you to get good at swinging and pushing. Right? Because why do I also, if, you're, if you push your forehand, why do I want you to get good at swinging? Because if all you do, MEP is kind of an outlier. He's able to handle a lot of pace up to a very high level. So he's able to beat 4-0 and even 4-5 players. But most people, it, it, once you get to that 4-0 level, just the, the sheer pace and everything and, and the technique of your opponents, and if all you can do is just push the ball, eventually you're going to get worn down. You're going to miss shots. They're going to hit winners against you. So if all you can do is push your forehand right now and you can compete at 3-5, but you're not winning as many matches as you want, and there's just you feel like there's just no way you can go out there and play with a 4-0 or a 4-5 player because they're just going to overwhelm you with power, you want to learn how to start having a swing forehand like that. Now on the flip side, if, you're to, if you just swing at your shot, see a lot of people just look at a push forehand and not give it any credit and think, well, I can, I can do that, no problem. I just refuse to do that. But then when I have you in a clinic here and I ask you to hit a chip approach shot, you can't do it, which is very valuable, especially you play doubles. If I ask you to do a nice defensive lob, over the net person, whether you're playing singles or doubles, you can't do it, right? If I ask you to hit a nice little delicate drop shot like that, you can't do it, <laughs> right? Because all you're working on all day is you're trying to hit every single forehand like you're the greatest pro on tour, like you're, you're Carlos Alcaraz. But guess what? Carlos Alcaraz is really showing us the importance of having a good push or punch technique. Because what he does all the time is he'll hit big forehands and then a lot of times he'll end the point with a nice little push or punch drop shot.
So it's very important that you are able to do both. So I have a drill for you that I want you to practice so when you're playing a match, you can start to have more variety in your matches. Hey, if you're still watching this video, be to remind me that we didn't invite you yet to our seven day forehand challenge, which is coming up at the end of the month. It's gonna be a lot of fun, it's absolutely free. Go to sevendayforehandchallenge.com. B2 also, if you don't like the video, he starts to cry. Like he'll cry all the way home if you don't give this video a like. And also subscribe because that's how you get better at tennis. Because I teach you how to serve, how to hit awesome forehands, how to hit nice, good, solid push forehands as well. Don't forget about those. And let's get to the end of this video because I want to give you this drill. All right, B2, do you want to go chase the ball? Let's see if he wants to go chase the ball. B2, do you want to go chase the ball? Ready? B2, where he goes? I think he's going right back into his basket. And it's, where, he's going, look at that. He wants to go home. He's like, Pete, I've been here at the court long enough. I want to go home. All right, let's, let's finish this, this video for B2 and for you. Okay, so here's the drill I want you to do. What we're going to do is we're going to do a cross court down the line and drop shot combination, okay? So we're gonna go swing, swing, push. So you gotta be in your semi-western or eastern grip for the first two, and then you gotta go to a continental grip for the last one. So watch this, watch this. So we're gonna go cross court, ball almost got away from me, down the line. Oh, let's try it again, I missed it long, I tweaked. Down the line, perfect, and now, Boom, little drop shot. You see that? And you see right there, that's why it's hard to be a swinger, right? Because I hit the first one beautifully, then I missed the open court. I would lose the point right there because I did a little tweak. I opened up this slightly, I felt it as I hit it, right? So again, that's why it's important to have that, that push. Okay, okay, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna go punch or push, punch cross court, punch down the line, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a short ball and we're gonna hit the ball cross court again. Right, watch this. So we have that, that ability to keep changing gears, right? So we're gonna go punch cross court, good. Punch down the line, right? See how effective that is? Now, now they're struggling to get to my, my punch balls. Now I get a short ball and I'm gonna put the ball away cross court. Right? So this is something, this is awesome drills you can be doing by yourself with a basket. Get up, get up. Okay? Hey. Now, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do our ultimate rally ball cross court with a high heavy spin. Then we're gonna be looking to hit a short chip ball cross court and then we're gonna rip it down the line. Okay? This will be our last combination. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit high and heavy. So now I'm gonna swing this, I'm gonna get very low, and I'm gonna lift up and then come down here and hit a high heavy ball. Right, so that's the first one I want you to do. So we're gonna lift up and hit it. Good ball right in the corner. Now I'm gonna hit this one short and bring them forward. You see how effective that is? You see how it's good to be able to do this? Imagine you just hit that. You got them way back. Then you brought them forward, okay? And you can either hit that one, you can practice hitting that one short on the down the line, or even if you're playing doubles, let's say you're playing doubles, you can hit that one deep and high just like we just did, and you can move on in and practice hitting a nice little short low one to draw them to the net. So now your third one is you're gonna move up and you're going to rip it up the line. So you're gonna come up here and you're gonna rip it up the line, okay? So, those are your exercises that you want to do. The last thing I want you to do, your last drill you're gonna do, because people are just not good at this, is I wanna see, you're gonna see how many out of 10 you can chip over the net person in doubles and just get it passed between the service box and the, the back court, right? Because not many people are good at this, okay? So we're gonna just practice, we're practicing our doubles too, so the alley is fine. That's two in a row. That's three in a row. This is, you wanna do this with a pushing style. Four in a row. We'll just do two more, because I could do this one all day. All right, good. All right, so there you go, guys. Learning how to use your push and your swing forehand in harmony together. They don't have, you don't have to pick one or the other. You pick both, you become more of a complete player and you'll be able to win way more matches at 3-5.
And then you'll also be able to get up to that next level. You'll be able to go to 4.0 and 4.5. And don't ever, ever, ever forget about your push forehand because you can use it for approach shots, drop shots. When you get nervous, you can use it just to make the shot. You see Novak Djokovic use it all the time just to dig out balls and put the ball back in play. So both are necessary to play really good tennis. I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you want to be able to play with more power but also more control, I have something really cool for you right now. I have a three-day topspin challenge that's going to, first of all, show you some power positions, teach you some technique to set up your topspin for you perfectly. And then more important, I'm going to teach you how to get the feel of topspin. The feel makes it real. If you can feel the ball gripping and ripping those strings, you're going to be able to play a much more aggressive brand of tennis that's also more consistent and safe. So you can do it even when you're nervous. So uh, if that sounds good to you, go down the description box. I'm also going to put it here in the card section. Also, there's going to be a little uh, box that shows up at the end of this video that you can click on to sign up for your free Tospin challenge. You want to do this soon, though, because we're starting April 15th, and it's just three days. So make sure that you sign up for it. And uh, if you like this video, give it a like. And if you're totally obsessed with tennis and you want to keep staying obsessed, then make sure you follow this channel. And the best way to do that is to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video.